Hi guys and welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. What you see in the vise is a stolen fly I picked up from an angler at Draycott and I'm going to show you my version of it. So without further ado, let's get into it. The hook in the vise is a Hanak H230 barbless hook. This one's at size 10, it's on a medium wire and it's finished in black nickel. The, th the thread or floss I'm going to be using initially is the Glowbrite. As you can see it's green and the first thing I want to do with this is get a couple of turns in behind the head here. Once I've got that secured, I can remove the bulk of my waste. Now, for the rib of this fly, the label's gone, but it is Semplify 0.01 black wire. And I've got a little bit here ready to tie in. Now, the reason I tie the rib in so near to the, uh, the start is I want to try and hide that profile that you get when you tie in a wire rib. So if I, the, the sooner I can get it in, the sooner I can get it covered up and hidden into the fly. Try and keep it on top of the shank. Uh, if you can keep the whole thing, it's just on my side on top in one straight line, it does help a little. So I'm gonna come all the way back, like so. Yeah, I'm using this bobbin holder here, it's the one of these tension holders and I, I really dislike it. Um, I really miss the foot that comes down, as you can see here. Uh, it's one of these ones where you've got access to the thread. Uh, what do they call it? Design over practicality is what I would say. But uh, we won't have to put up with it for very long because once I've got this layer of floss down on the hook, I'm going to simply whip finish off and then I'll be adding some nano silk. I'm going to stop there, bring in my whip finish tool and take that off. And I've got a good mind to take this floss off and throw the bobbin holder right in the bucket. <laughs> <laughs> no, I won't do that, it would be wasteful. So, next we're going to add some Simplify Nano Silk. This is at 50D, and I'm just going to add that on in behind the eye, and then I'm going to come up and over my floss a little. Once I've got that on, I can then take away the waste. I'm going to bring my wire rib up in even open turns. Or as even as I can make it, should I say, all the way up to the head of the fly, at which point I can capture that in with a few turns, keeping tension on my thread, I'm just going to helicopter that away. So, so far so good. Next thing we want to do is add in a marabou wing, and what I'm going to be using is some comp candy, olive-esque they call it, unfortunately comp candy is no more. But I'm going to be taking about a thumbnail's width, uh, maybe slightly less than that actually. I get it in my hand and then I can cut away my waist. Now before I dress it up to the hook, I just damp it down and then I can come in and catch that in. Now there's obviously a, quite a, a large part at the front but that will become apparent shortly. I'm going to bring my thread in behind the marabou. And then before I do anything else, I'm going to come with my thumb and forefinger in my right hand and simply remove my excess marabou. I'm going to damp it all down, just keep it all neat and tidy. And the next thing I want to do is bring in my head. So what I'm using here is some uh, Trout Stalkers dubbing, Andrew Scruffy dubbing, whatever you want to call it. This one's the Appleby Green. Now it's very difficult to get a hold of this now. Uh, Andrew seems to have uh, disappeared from the the scene. I, ho I do hope he comes back. He's got himself embroiled in local politics, but um, that doesn't last forever as we all know. So hopefully one day he'll return and gift us more of his extremely good dubbing. So what I want to do is I open up my thread, I'm going to come in with my dubbing needle 
and just try and split the thread. Now, it's a challenge with 12 watt, I won't lie. And sometimes when you're tying a lot of them, it comes easy. Other times it takes a little bit of patience. So I'm going to grab my tiny bit of dubbing that I've spaced out there. Catch that in. Then spin it all up. Now when you're not um, explaining this fly, it's actually very quick to tie. And I've managed to tie up half a dozen of um, size 10s and half a dozen size 12s. I just think um, the boy that showed me the fly, he'd done really well on it in practice at Draycott. He was in the uh, John Horsley competition maybe a month or so back. And I just thought, it, when I seen it, I thought I must tie them up. And obviously uh, the videos, they're not done kind of in any logical order. And um, I'm tying this like six weeks ago from when you're watching it, but I'm all about the preparation. So once I've got that on, I don't really want my head to be seen. So that gets trapped in, just in beside the dubbing. And I can take that away. Tiny spot of super glue on the head should finish it off. And there you go. Uh, thanks very much. I'm, I'm sorry I can't recall the angler's name, but he was he come over from Canada. So I dare say, if he's watching this, thanks very much for the inspiration. Thanks for watching the video, and I'll see you all in the next one.